welcome to the Sophie Blue Extra Show, your midweek extra source of all things Everton. We're back this week and we're um, back with Paul and we're doing this segment on Danger Men, Cardiff. Uh, we've got Cardiff at home at the weekend and we're going to talk about Everton's Danger Men and also Cardiff's Danger Men if they've got any. Um, so we're going we're gonna to have a look at that. It's a bit of a t- difficult one, but um, we're going to have a look at their squad and see where we see any threat anyway, where, um, where they can trouble us, um, if, if at all. Um, we're taking this game for granted a little bit, but um, I'm hoping we'll be able to pull it off after all this. Otherwise, we're just gonna look stupid. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think um, we've had to look through the teams and we've struggled to find danger men. But um, we'll see what we've come up with anyway. What have you come up with, Paul? As you said, there, mate. I, I had a flick through their squad earlier this afternoon when I found out we were doing this, and I was just going through the names and. Oh, bloody hell. I, I don't know who almost any of those people are. I've never, never heard of any of them. And normally when there's teams that come up from the championship, you usually find one or two players that you recognise, like, you know, players who've maybe been in the Premier League before with other clubs and kind of gone down and just been sort of journeymen. And, but there's there's only one or two in that in that Carter team who, uh, do you know what I mean, who I even stop thinking, oh, yeah, I recognise his name. Other than that, they're just they're like an absolute bang average championship team that's spent... They've spent their whole careers in the lower leagues. Half them. I mean, one name that stuck out to me when I went through it was Junior Hoylet. Do you remember him? Yeah, from yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's Canadian. He's yeah, he's um, he yeah, little pacey winger. He, as you said, he burst onto the scene with Blackburn about seven or eight years ago, and yeah, he had a lot of attention around him. A lot of people were rating him, saying right, this kid's gonna get a move to a big, big club. He's gonna. He's going to be one of the next big things of English football. And I remember when he was easily the best player in that Blackburn team at the time. I remember he played against us and he just ripped us to bits. I think it was that game where did we win it late with a Kale goal. Okay. Yeah, it, it. yeah, yeah. Some game seven or eight years ago. It was that last season Blackburn were in the league before they went down. We we went we were down there and I think we won it with Kale in stoppage time, but. The two goals that they scored against us that day. If it's this game, I'm thinking about. I think Hoyler just ripped us to bits. And as I said, he was just. It was a player who really, really looked like he was going to be making some massive, massive strides in his career. And God knows what's happened to him. He just seems to. It's just not panned out at all. I mean, I remember we got linked with him, and he basically went. To, he chased the money at QPR. Yeah. Terrible move for him. QPR was just a club that was full of mercenaries. Remember them about five or four or five years ago. Yeah. When they went down, it was just full of players who were there just to get the wages and go home and not care. And he was one of the prime examples of that. And it seems that we've just bit him on the ass because he went down with QPR. And I don't think, I think until this season, he hadn't been back in the Premier League. No, yeah. So, yeah, you'd, you'd think, because he has got talent, but you'd think of the other clubs in the league clearly looked at what he did at QPR and I think, no, we don't, we don't need a player like that. He can, he can rock the championship. And he's just, that's where he's been all along. So, He's come back up at Cardiff now, and I think he, as I said, he's a player who's clearly got a bit of ability. And uh, we are Everton, aren't we? We are a player who we are that team that allow, likes to allow players who've done nothing for ages to just suddenly look world class and get and get goals and look brilliant. So, yeah, I, I'd like us. To, I, I think we need to keep a bit of an eye on Hoylet if he's still the Hoylet that I remember him being. But other than that, Christ, who is there who's in that team? I mean, I don't want to just completely knock them because they seem like they're an honest group of professionals, but I, I don't see them staying up at all with what they've got. I mean, I know they haven't got the money that Fulham and Wolves have got because they spent big when they came up, whereas they've just kind of had to stick with what they've got, it's built around the nucleus type thing. But with the manager they've got, Warnock, with the squads that they've got looking at it, the way it is now, I just... Uh, I, I wouldn't bet any money on them staying up at all. I, I really, they say there's no easy games in the Premier League, but not every game has to be hard. And I, 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 this game should not be hard. It really should not be. I, I, we, we've got to be keeping a clean sheet against these. I'll be very, very displ- not happy, displeased if we if we let these score. Honest to God. Yeah, well, I don't even think they want. To, like the manager does want to stay up anyway. I remember he he came out early in the season and said, um, "I don't like managing in the Premier League." In Neil Warnock, yeah, you think that they have a pain? I prefer. I'll have, you, I'll, have you, I'll, I'll have your job then if you don't want it. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Do you know what I mean? So there's lots of people have it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I said at the time, like, why isn't the owner saying, "All right, then, if you don't want to manage in the Premier League, this is our big opportunity. Off, off you go." Then. Oh, but yeah. uh, imagine, 
Can your car and support and your own manager is that? Yeah, I, I, I can't really be bothered with this. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> do, do you want to pick your coat? Do you want to pick your coat up and go then and give it to a manager who's got a bit of fight and a bit of desire and wants to prove himself and wants to keep us up? You can't be, you can't be saying things like that. That's just what type of thing Moyes used to say that. Do you know what I mean? Like even Moyes wasn't that bad, but you know, just this sort of oh, this is grim. This look at our lot in life. We we'll just have to try our best. and know disasters and strike. It's like. Mate, if you're gonna throw the towel in. When, 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 did he, when did he say that? It was like it was it was pretty early season. It was probably two months ago now, I think. Yeah, I, I know he's been chatting about retiring soon, and I think that's different. If he's saying stuff like, "Oh yeah, I think I'm getting a bit too old for this now. Uh, this is probably going to be my last season on a call today." But if that's the actual words he used, yeah, I, I don't really like managing in the Premier League. Then, Jesus Christ, what a brain dead comment to me. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like Vincent Tan as well, the owner. Uh, He's he's not a manager who, from my experience, is 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 wants to hold on to a manager for too long, obviously as well, because he sacked Malky Mackay after uh, he'd done quite well with Cardiff, but um and, I, and after he got caught, after he'd been racially abusing him. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I will I will say that for Vincent <laughs> Tan, he got a bit of, he got a really bad rep back when Cardiff when Cardiff were last in the Premier League when they had Malky Mackay and he sacked him and it was like, what's this foreign owner doing? He doesn't got a clue what he's doing sacking a. You know, a solid, reliable, professional British manager. He's deluded. He doesn't know what he wants. And then it came out months later that Mackay was just a was just a complete racist <laughs> and had been saying so. It got, got busted completely. The text messages leaked out of just some horrible comments he'd been making about players and their backgrounds and their ethnicities. And Malcolm Tan, to be fair to him, proper banter, hung on to these texts, hung on to this information for ages. Didn't release it. Didn't when it, when he was getting loads of abuse off. Idiot pundit saying, "What are you doing, sacking our mate Malky Mackay?" He just stayed quiet, didn't come out and justify why he'd done it. And then when it looked like Malky Mackay had the Wigan job in his back pocket, it was, it was a job. Uh, he had a, he had a job lined up, and it was about to be announced and everything. Then Mackay leaked that, not not a tan leaked that information just to uh, piss on the just to piss on the parade yeah. completely. And then Mackay subsequently didn't get that job that he literally was going to get announced as in the morning. Yeah, so I've got that. time for time like that. He's, He's ban- banter, you know, That's pure brilliant. banter. Brilliant. <laughs> Very clever from Vincent Town. There you go. We'll give you that. We don't condone, condone racism, but like, what, what a clever man! Come on, like that. Yeah, I, I, can, I can, don't, I can, don't, I, I can, don't a victim of racist abuse getting his own back in a proper, yeah. clever, well thought out way. Yeah, no, <laughs> like getting his own back in a, in a bad way, like of a completely legal way. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. And obviously, you just, <laughs> yeah, it's just wonderful. Like, it's brilliant. But. Uh, I didn't realise that about Malky Mackay as well. What an idiot! Um, hope he never never comes yeah, near Everton. Scandal that, yeah. Yeah, that's terrible. Um, so yeah, um, my danger man for Cardiff. I've got to admit, in the last couple of weeks, um, I'm big on fantasy Premier League, with fantasy football, and um, I, I like my budget options. I've put Callum Patterson in there. He's the striker, uh, the makeshift striker for Cardiff at the moment. Um, he was, I think, he was a defender a couple of years ago. Um, he's big. He's about six foot three, something like that, and um, he's quite broad as well. Um, he's sta- he, I think he started out as a defender. Um, he's been playing as a midfielder, and basically, what Neil Warnock looked at him and said, "You're a big lad. Go up top." Um, so he's been playing up top for the last couple of weeks, and he's banged a couple of goals, uh, a couple of goals in for the last couple of weeks. So um, he's found his way into my fancy Premier League team anyway. But um, so he's going to be my danger man naturally. But. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think he holds too much problems because obviously uh, Cardiff, if they are going to use that option, they're going to hoof it up to him and just uh, see what he can do with it. And I don't think he's got that much skill to do anything much with it. Um, the goals he scored haven't been majorly impressive. Um, the only player I'm, I, I, I'd mention that's got much about them, um, not to slag, slag off all the other players, but because um, obviously, as, as, as we mentioned before we started recording, there's a, there's a couple of talented players in there, like the Iceland, Icelandic midfielder, Gunnarsson. But um, the one who stood out for me is um, Bobby Reid. He, he's got something about him, and he's probably the only one who's got something about them, to, to me, the only one who's got something about him in that squad. Um, he didn't play the last game, but um, Bobby Armani Reid. Armani is his middle name, and he's a, he, he's, he's, a, he's a good little lad. He's, he's not played much Premier League football, but he's, he's, he's a raw talent, and he's a... Um, He's one to watch if he does play. But um, there's our Cardiff one to watch. Anyway, we, we wanted to get a couple of names out there. But um, what do you think for Everton anyway? Who are you gonna are you gonna who's gonna be the one to watch for Everton? A little bit easier. Um, if he plays, 
I, I imagine Bernard. I said this before the Chelsea preview that I thought I think he's due a goal and one's going to arrive soon. And I'll, I'll go with Bernard again. I mean, he, he's, he's sort of similar to Walcott in the sense that he hasn't been brilliant the last few weeks. I, I, I don't think he's been bad at any talk, at any point. I don't think he deserves dropping, even like some people do at Walcott. But he's he's kind of not hit the levels that he hit in those first few weeks when he came into the team, like he did against Leicester and games like that. So I really want to see Bernard get a goal. And I, I've said this before, I think as soon as he gets one, then the floodgates will open and he'll start scoring quite consistently or at least getting assists consistently. So I think our danger man will be Bernard. Well, an, another player I'll mention is probably Yeri Mina because as we've seen it, he's a massive lad. He scores goals from set pieces. I think Yeri Mina is going to get on the end of is going to get his head on the end of a corner, and he's going to stick one in the net at Goodison soon. And why can't it be this week if he if he plays? So, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see Mina score a goal off from a set piece, or other than that, maybe um, Richardson's the easy one to say. But hopefully, Tosin if Tosin gets on the pitch at any point, I, I really want to see Tosin score because I want to see Tosin kind of win people back around because it seems like so far the season. Some some supporters have maybe lost a bit of faith in him, or just don't think he's good enough to be a starter in our team anymore. And I want to see Tosin, if he gets on the pitch, really go out and really make a, make an effort to impress people and get himself a goal and remind people of his quality. But yeah, my main, my main player, Everton player to watch would be Bernard. Keep an eye on Yeni Mina as well, and hopefully, if Tosin gets on at some point, Tosin will give will impress some people. Yeah, surely this has got to be the game where Tosin gets on and gets a goal. Come on, like yeah. if he's gonna do it, it's it's hopefully gonna be against Cardiff. Um, with all respect to Cardiff, as we as we've said, but uh, hopefully that will be the game for Tosin to get a goal. Um, I was tempted to go with Richarlison. I always do for me danger man because he's the obvious danger man for Everton. But um, just to boast about Premier, fantasy Premier League again, I had Richarlison in my side before he played his first game for Watford. Just gonna throw that out there. Just just gotta just gotta mention that. So um, I, from day one, Michelle has been my man. But um, I'm gonna put him aside for this week because I keep on going forward up, and he's the obvious option. So I've, I'm gonna go with Adam Ola Luckman as Everton's danger man, um, because he's he's been absolutely brilliant when he's come off the bench. And if he is to come into the side, um, if if he, obviously if he's got over his injury, which uh, kept him out of the England under 21 games, um, then he he's, he's my one to watch because. He, he, as we mentioned before, that lovely little piece of skill he did against Chelsea when he came off the bench. And not just that, I think he, he, he's played well when he's come off the bench. He's looked to create chances. He's got an assist a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he played well in the friendly against Gormaya. He was, uh, as I said, uh, the best player on the pitch, in my opinion. Um, so I think if Luckman is to get his start, finally, well-deserved, then he's going to be the one to watch for me because I think he could tiptoe through that card of defence with all respect because I do think there's a couple of good defenders in there as well like uh, Sol Bamba he's a good defender for Cardiff but I do think Luckman could um, ring round, ring, uh, run rings around some of those players so um, yeah he'll turn them inside out wouldn't he yeah it's just whether he'll start isn't it whether he's um, whether he'll get thrown in there because I, I, I'm not I can't see Silver dropping Walcott to be honest because he, he's, he's messed up a couple of chances but he's not done anything majorly wrong and he's not been awful he's just been average in a a well performing team so yeah just just out of form a bit isn't he Do you know I mean? that's that's it really I mean players go out of form it happens to everybody and you, the only way to is you just like most of the time you just got to play through it haven't you or, yeah. so yeah I agree with you I, I want to see Lockman play myself but if he doesn't then Hopefully, the player who starts in front of him, whether that's Walcott or someone else, hopefully they justify their inclusion over him because Luttman's really impressed the last few weeks and I really want to see Luttman let off the leash and really... I'm going to close this off, really. I, I, I think Luttman has done a complete 180 on his attitude. I, he looks a completely different player than the person he looked like in the early weeks of the season when he just didn't look interested at all. I think Penny's dropping Luttman now and I think... He deserves a bit of recognition. I think the man, I think he's earned the manager's trust. That's the way to say it. Yeah, I think the manager has seen should have seen the fact that he's he's turned round and he's given it his all. And I think he should reward him with some more minutes. Hopefully, but we've got to trust Silver whatever he decides. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's got to come sooner or later. Surely he's got to be given his chance. And uh, this would be a good game to give him that chance. I think um, unless Cardiff go for the approach that many teams have gone 
against Everton in recent weeks have just kicked lumps out of us and then it might not be the best games that you come in but um, he's got to get his chance sooner or later and hopefully I'd, I'd love to see him start against Cardiff because he's, um, he's he's knocking on the door and he can't do much more he's knocking on the door until his knuckles are bleeding and the door's off his hinges and um, he's, he's got to get in there soon so um, that's, that's our uh, danger man anyway um, thanks for watching uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the video and comment uh, below your danger men. Let us know who you think uh, could be a threat from the Cardiff side. Anyone we've left out out of disrespect for the Cardiff players or anyone you think for Everton yeah. as well might be um, might be a threat. So uh, and give us all, also give us a follow on social media. Um, our Twitter handles are below. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, Paul, this week. No problem, mate. It's great to talk to you again. And just before we finish off, I'll, I'll just ask you. What, what score are you going to go for? Oh, yes. Yeah, we forgot about score predictions. Um, I was on the Echo podcast this weekend. I went for 4-0. So I, I'm going to stick I'm going to stick <laughs> my guns and go 4-0. What about oh, you? you? You git. That was my one. <laughs> I didn't think you'd have I was, I was going to go for 4-0. I, I, I think we'll score some goals. And I, 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 I don't want to concede. I want to get... I, I, I want to see us get clean sheets. Do you know what I mean? I love a clean sheet. I mean, call me old-fashioned. But I, I, love, I love seeing our goalie not have to make any saves yeah. so uh, yeah I, I'll go for a I'll go for a 4-0 as well I'll stick to that yeah. Uh, just yeah I'll go for a 4-0 but as long as we win that's, that's the important thing and I think we will win so come on up the Blues come on you Blues 4-0 all round from us so uh, that's us for this week I think we are we're due to give someone a hiding soon and if you're going to pick a team it'll be Cardiff uh, with all respect to Cardiff as I keep saying but um, yeah fingers crossed 4-0 Everton 4 Card of nil. Put a bet on it. You've heard the DFAs from both of us, so stick a quid on it. Stick a ten on it, maybe, if you're feeling lucky. So um, that's what we think anyway. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, if you're listening on the podcast or the videos, make sure, make sure you subscribe. And um, thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Uh, make sure you tune in next time on the Toffee Blues.